Esta conferencia comenzará a grabarse. So, welcome to this new session of the European Alliance Against Coronavirus. Uh, we are uh, recording the session, so you need to be aware of it. And if you keep with us, you are accepting that we will record it and share it through our channels. That's important for you to know. Today we have a non so typical session, meaning we are not uh, discussing about a, a topic, but uh, mainly sharing information about a new call that is important for clusters and promoting the creation of consortia. So today is the, the day, it's not a as you know, we are not an official agency. We are the European uh, Clusters Alliance. Uh, our members are clusters and cluster networks. Uh, so we are not speaking as European Commission, neither we expect to, to have here today uh, uh, representatives from them because they will organize a uh, uh, open day in the coming weeks. And that will be the uh, the real reference for the official information. Okay, but as the uh, dates are running, and uh, it's important for us clusters to uh, cluster networks to prepare our consortia. We thought that it would make sense to uh, organize this session to share here what we know about the call and to facilitate. Uh, the proposals, okay, the creation of consortia, as I said before. So that is the invitation for today, and we will start with a review of the call as uh, we know uh, it by Nina, Nina Hoffman. Thank you, Thank Nina. You and good morning, everyone, and to all of you who connected today. Um, yes, as Antonio said, I would like to give a brief overview of the main pillars of the call, the joint cluster initiatives and the call to for the creation of Euro clusters to address the twin transition and to build resilience. And what do we have under this call? Um, so the ultimate aim from the European Commission with this call is to create 30 cross-sectorial, interdisciplinary, and trans-European strategic joint cluster initiatives, which they call Euroclusters. And what do we understand in the Euroclusters? Are consortia of cluster organizations or the EU networks that work together with other kinds of organizations to support the twin transition, so the green transition, the digital transition, and to build resilience both in the social and economic um, sense. And under this call and for the proposals, what they're looking for is supporting measures for companies, both in and beyond um, their respective industrial ecosystems, and to create collaboration networks at EU level, so um, across borders, across countries, but either within or across the ecosystems, so that we work towards this resilience of the industrial ecosystems and to boost the green and digital transition and bring them forward with the measures proposed in the proposals under this call. So how to do this? To initiate, develop and maintain an EU long-term strategic partnership between country, uh, companies that could be of different kinds but with an emphasis on SMEs with other organizations, which could be research and knowledge institutions, science and technology parks, business support organizations, could be financial service providers, NGOs, or even related public bodies across all the participating countries, so the EU member states and other cosmic participating countries, and bring together a critical mass of firms and societies in geographical and functional proximity. So in or um, across the different industrial ecosystems. Altogether, this call is divided into 15 strands. One is one open strand, which can focus on the cross fertilization of various ecosystems with no direct focus on only one industrial ecosystems. 
And then we have the 14 specific strands, which address the 14 industrial ecosystems as they are described and defined in the updated EU industrial strategy, and which we have been um, discussing also here in the past morning sessions of the European Cluster Alliance. And what is also important to say is um, one proposal should focus on one strand, on one of the 15 strands. It doesn't mean that you can only participate in, one's, um, in one proposal, but you can only participate with one proposal in one strand. Proposals should focus at least on one of these five leading objectives that are described in the call. One is the building a network of resilience so that we improve the resilience of the EU industrial ecosystems by developing value chain interlinkages in the EU single market. The second objective is to improve the strategic autonomy and to build capacity in the most critical supplies and technologies of these industrial ecosystems. But also coming here a bit from the learning of the crisis to reinforce um, our industrial autonomy and to avoid um, or to work towards avoiding um, any supply chain disruptions. The third one is um, the adoption of process and technologies for the twin, twin transition and to reinforce um, the transformation for uh, a greener and more digital economy. The fourth one is dedicated to skills. So uh, these are objective, the objective is to train, and to upskill and reskill the workforce and to attract talent. And the fifth one is the internationalization aspect. So to go international, to boost access to global supply and value chains. All these objectives need to be addressed in the proposal. You can focus on one of them more, but it needs to be a well-balanced mix altogether of how these objectives are addressed. Going a bit into the numbers of the call, so the available budget altogether is 42 million euros, with a maximum of project budget of 1.4 available for the consortium. But this is not all for the consortium itself, but it must um, be redirected in 75% to the SMEs through finance services and support their resilience and their twin transition. This could be in different forms, that could be in vouchers or in access to testing facilities. There's a number of possibilities listed in the open as to how this money could be directed to the SMEs. And then 25% will be for the joint activities between the cluster organization and the other consortium partners. This could be um, used for the work between them and to um, design, support the measures, and to coordinate them. What is expected to be funded? Um, around 30 projects altogether with at least one project in each of the 14 strands related to the industrial ecosystems and at least 16 in the open strand. Um, it says in the call it could also vary a bit, but this is the, the ambition of different projects. And we have a submission deadline that is the 30th of November until 5 CET plus time. And the expected evaluation will be until April, and then the communication of the results in April 22. Eligible applicants are legal entities that could be public or private bodies, and they must be established in one of the eligible countries. So that's either an EU member state, the participating cosmic countries, and there's a list of participating non-EU countries that can be found um, in the open call document. And um, to be eligible, you must be or represent a cluster organization, a single market program cluster network, or other types of organization that support the green digital transition and to build EU resilience. 
And if you form an applicant consortium, a so-called Euro cluster, this consortium can only be only um, propose one proposal. But you can be a different Euro cluster. So team up with different cluster organizations, team up with other um, entities and build proposals under different strands, but only one Euro cluster first. And who do we need to look for for our consortium? For at least three beneficiaries, not affiliated entities, to form a consortium with a minimum of three cluster organizations or networks from at least three different EU member states. And half of these cluster organizations need to be registered on the ECCP, on the European Cluster Collaboration Platform, which I'm sure you're all, all very familiar with. And there's um, another condition that at least one partner needs to be established in the less advanced region of the EU member state. And this is also a list that is published um, with a link from the where you can find all the regions listed in the EU and see how they are categorized. And last but not least, I wanted to address the mandatory actions because there's a list of mandatory actions related to the different um, five objectives that we've seen before. Altogether, these are seven and they all need to be addressed in the proposal. There can be um, um, and there must be other potential actions which um, are also very detailed in the call but um, this is up to the consortium partners to decide which of the potential activities they would also want to carry out. But these mandatory actions needs to be addressed, which are the design and building of a new collaboration model between cluster organizations and other actors, with the idea of creating resilience preparedness and business continuity plans as the first objective um, was the network of resilience, this is the mandatory action related to this. The second one is to identify product innovations to reduce dependencies on critical inputs and technologies here in Europe with a view to introducing new different products or services. The third one is the implementation of business process innovations to work towards this tied to the adoption of technologies that help SMEs with uh, the successful green and digital transition. The next two are related to skills. So one related to the cluster manager skills to offer better services for green upskilling and to attract talent. And the second one is to establish joint services for SMEs for the upskilling and reskilling of their workforce. It could be in trainings and courses, job facilitation, recruitment, so different types of services are available to The sixth one is related to the GO international objectives, so to establish services to support international trade, investment, and partnering opportunities for the SMEs that you that you will um, work for, that you will uh, foster the um, internationalization activities with the aim to reach cooperation agreements with European entities and entities in their countries. And the last one, which is of course always um, an important activities of the cluster organization, the communication. So and as a mandatory action to communicate the work and the results of your Euro cluster. You can, if you like, put a specific emphasis on one of these mandatory actions that all of these need to be part of the open call with different potential activities. So, Antonio, back to you. That was the overview of the call text. Thank you very much, Nina. Okay, that is uh, what we have in our hands. Um, we uh, still have something like three weeks, Nina. Is that right? I don't remember. Until the 30th of November. No, sorry, not three weeks. Um, near two weeks, two more, sorry. So um, it's time to start working on the building of those consortia. 
And uh, now I would like to hear you, to, to hear your questions. Perhaps we cannot answer them, but what we can do is uh, re register them and uh, forward them to the EC, okay, European Commission. And uh, anyway, you are also invited to, if you want, present your candidacy to or your interest on, on participating in your uh, in in some specific consortia. So the floor is yours. It's open for everyone. Uh, yes, Antonio. Good morning. I have a question to you and to Nina. That is about uh, how do you see that it will be in the deconstruction of the Euro cluster? the um, involvement of uh, big companies and SMEs. Uh, of course, SMEs are the most important players in this kind of projects, but how do you see the possibility of trying to intercluster different uh, companies from different sectors involving SMEs and uh, big companies? Nina, if you can go to the first uh, page, okay, with the aim, yeah here that one okay so th that is in fact the the main aim of the call okay so clusters we are uh we are uh, industrial ecosystems um and we are promoting the growing of our businesses and so this call at the end needs to benefit our uh, businesses both SMEs and large companies uh, but but the direct uh, involvement as uh, members of the of the consortia should be either cluster or cluster networks. Okay, but for sure, the final beneficiaries must be the SMEs, and in fact, a very important part of the of the um, funding will be at the end delivered to the SMEs that will benefit from the activities of the consortia approved. Okay, That's it. More, more questions or more comments, not only questions. Yes, good morning. Uh, this is Marielle Campanella from Pol SCS. Thank you very much, uh, Antonio and uh, Nina, for this uh, opportunity at uh, the early stage of, uh, of the call. It's always uh, more than welcome to see such uh, exchanges. I have several questions, but I'm not sure that uh, the answers can be found uh, in this uh, group, but at least the question will be risen. They are very practical, actually, uh, regarding this open strand. Uh, to which extent this open strand has to be open? Does it have to be very transversal on all ecosystems, or can it address only two, three of those ecosystems? And uh, if they are open, can they be um, uh, technological specific, but focusing on all ecosystems? It's a first question that I would have. And the second question is about the mandatory actions. Can these mandatory actions can be uh, covered, financially speaking, uh, by the 75% if we demonstrate that they bring added value to the SMEs? The monetary actions, what do you mean, sorry, by monetary um, actions? Nina has uh, shown a table with the monetary actions that uh, the consortium has to carry out. Um, well, all of them are not directly um, uh, targeting the, the SMEs. So is the budget to carry out this, um, these uh, monetary actions can be taken from the 75% that is addressed to SMEs if we are able to demonstrate that, that these actions will benefit to the SMEs. Or the 75% are exclusively for uh, cascade funding or such mechanism. Something that we can ask. Nina. Yeah, oh. it's something that we can ask, but as far as I understand, um, the 75% um, of the budget let's go here, need to be services or direct, either direct financial services or um, in form of training access to different services. So it can be in different ways that address the mandatory activity. So it does not need to be only a voucher scheme. If, if that, for example, is the question for but, one but of these mandatory. 
it's not possible to provide those services if they are paid uh, from the consortium. So, so if we are speaking out the money for the companies, the, the, that money could not be invested in paying services provided by the consortium members. But I think that you uh, you could uh, prioritize that the the spending of that money will be aligned with the mandatory actions. Could you go back to the mandatory action list, please, Nina? For example, uh, perhaps you could um, you could promote the uh, facilita uh, facilitation of um, ne uh, supporting new international trade. Okay, by action paid by for the companies. Okay, not to you, but to other facilities. I don't know, spending on 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 a trip to whatever or going to fair. So the way that I understand it. Okay. Okay, it's but, a way I, I understand also, but it might uh, require cool some checks with the commission if they are organizing if they are organizing any info there whatsoever. Regarding the open strand, do you have any idea on the openness of this trend? Yeah, the, it says uh, it doesn't have to have one specific uh, industrial ecosystem focus, so it could be several. Doesn't say it needs to be all, as far as I understand. Yeah, uh, it, it was a general recommendation when we discussed it in the SPER group, okay, uh, to create a uh, consortia that were not only composed by strictly by clusters working on the same ecosystem okay but to look for those uh, uh, those collaboration with other ecosystem that could really create uh, innovation no? Fer cross fertilization as they say okay so th this is a general um, recommendation but this is a very good question how open can they be? Okay, can, for example, can, can a, a specific uh, a sec, uh, ecosystem consortia include one or two members for another, for another, uh, for another ecosystem, meaning, for example, digital. Digital is very common in, in, in any, any action, okay? So, is, is it possible? It, that is a very good question, or possible for sure, but recommend it. Okay, thank you, Antonio. Thank you, Nina. Thanks to you. Okay, more. I, I have a question, if I can. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, for sure. Yes, okay. I have a question uh, because we are talking about uh, voucher and voucher scheme. Uh, to your understanding, the voucher scheme uh, well, for me, uh, the design of the voucher scheme needs to be in the 25%. But I was wondering if you think that uh, when you analyze uh, all the um, vouchers that are, that are coming in, that can be in the 75%, all the time you spend in making the selection. Nina. Yes, so all the work that you carry out as the cluster organizations and as the consortium that will go into the 25%. So the efforts dedicated to delivering the services to the SMEs, for designing the services um, or the schemes or the financial support and all the activities that you are doing as the consortium. And then you have the 75 that go directly to the SMEs. So the, all the activities you described to design the voucher scheme, to evaluate the proposals that you receive from the SMEs to promote the scheme, to my understanding, that should be in the 25th as your activities of the cluster organizations. Thank you. Not the good news, but thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, more questions. I see several in the chat, but it's better if you explain them directly. 
Good morning for everyone. This is Christina, AgriFood Lithuania uh, cluster and uh, of course Lithuanian uh, cluster network uh, association. So um, my, uh, it's not quite a question, but uh, do we have anybody who is willing to take a lead? <laughs> That's an interesting, uh, would be interesting to know maybe already we have some volunteers or some uh, some news on that and also do we have in mind maybe already the uh, the specific um uh, parts in which we would plan to take part like uh, which which topics maybe we are thinking of i am sure that there will be many many consortia so many leaders on the on the proposals um and I understand that what you are telling us is that you are willing to participate, no? It's either... Yes, yes, yes. That. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. And you are working, as far as I know, Christina, in uh, digital agrofood. Is that right? Yeah, well, personally, I'm the managing director of uh, AgriFood Lithuania uh, cluster. We work with digitalization and uh, green deal goals. So green digitalization, digitalization plus upskilling, reskilling, uh, new competences and etc. But I'm also working as a managing director of Lithuanian network, uh, uh, cluster network. So it's again, we have uh, many different sectorial clusters in our uh, association. So it really depends which uh, which organization do you need to join. It depends on, on, on which uh, uh, what we would form, what kind of alliance, for example, for the proposal. I'm sure that you uh, could uh, be a ex will be an excellent partner for uh, Consortia focus on your on your um, ecosystem food, um, and uh, I also think that networks that are mentioned as beneficiaries, possible beneficiaries of the of the uh, proposals, will be uh, could be a excellent uh, member for the, especially for those that are open strands, uh, perhaps also for the for the um, ecosystem strands, meaning there are uh, many or several um, network focus on ecosystem at this moment, okay? So it will make sense. But um, for sure on, on, on those that are open strand, they could provide uh, the, the capacity of the network, okay? So it is uh, also a personal recommendation, huh? for sure. We are not speaking officially, it's just a personal recommendation. Okay, more, more comments, more questions? I see that there are problems with the template. Okay, I don't, I, I, we haven't tried to download it, so I don't know if it is solved or not, but we can, we can ask for it. Um, just a question about the open strand, just to be sure. <laughs> um, so if we have a subject that is maybe transversal uh, and not uh, dedicated to only one strand, uh, should we go in the open thread or should we propose it to um, to one of a different strand? I understand that if it is not... Uh... Um, if it is really transversal, naturally it should be it should go for the open strand. Uh, would you could try to develop uh, accidents through one just one uh, industrial ecosystem, even if it is transversal? Um, but for me, it will make sense. The, the, as far as I understand, the Commission wants or prefer. Um, Though that kind of uh, cross-linking uh, proposals that reinforce the uh, the reach and the capabilities of the of the members to to promote the, the 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 growth, okay, of the 
of the members of the companies participating in the in the proposal. Okay, so in a first approach, it sounds as it would be better to include it in the open strand if it is horizontal. Okay, and do you do you know how much? Because you told us that there will be one project funded per strand at least, and it is the same for the open strand, or maybe we're expecting more. No, no. The text of the call speak about sixteen open strands approved uh, projects. Sixteen, mm -hmm. one six. So there are there are there, there are possibilities to present different proposals. I also understand that perhaps um, as you need to focus either way, the the open stand proposal in one ecosystem, is that right, Nina? Uh, you could we could see that also that there will be some kind of a split between uh, ecosystem even on the open strands, no? But um, system, is that right, Nina? I understand it as such. If somebody wants to challenge what we uh, say, don't hesitate. Okay, we could we could be mistaken. So this is a, a exercise of uh, collective intelligence. Don't hesitate. Um. Antonio Nina, this is Annabelle from uh, Polymeris. Uh, good to hear you. Um, quick question. Um, I think it's not only this November that there is a call. I think there are several calls in, in the coming years, right? It's not everything, uh, all the 30 under this call. I think it's in, in the four years, right? I don't think so. No, no. As far as I understand, this call is for several years and three years, okay? And in th three years, there will be another call, but not every year. Okay, on, the... On, the portal, on the portal, there are several um, uh, budget for each year. Yeah, but yes. is the is the split of the forty millions? Okay. So they are assigning budget per year, but is the projects will be uh, six, uh 36 months or long so uh, every year has the budget but at the end is this call is for the for the next three years but does it mean that they will finance the, they will finance the 40 because 40 million is for uh 30 projects yeah so they will divide the the, the 30 projects into four years okay yes Yes. No, 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 no. They will not divide the 30 projects in three years. They will approve 30 projects now that will uh, be uh, developed during the next three years. And after that period, I think that there is a, a foreseen new call, but after the, the period, you know? What I mean. Okay, so there's just one strong deadline that is this one in November. I think so. Okay. We could ask also to be sure, but uh, I think so. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. More questions? Yes, yeah, sorry if I may uh, again. It's Adrian from Valorial. Um, regarding the specific strands, um, because we have don't to hesitate. don't hesitate to activate the camera, you know, it's more yes. human. It's... Uh, sorry, I cannot today, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, so sorry, yes, the specific strands because we have to have digital anyway in every um, uh, every proposal. So if it's agriculture culture then uh, if it's agri food we will have to have a uh, digital so it's cross uh, sectorial that's what i have uh, trouble understanding because we will have to have digital that, that, that is a very good question that we need to ask in writing okay in my okay. understanding the is the um, 
the specific uh, sectoral uh, proposals could have members coming from other ecosystems. Okay, not not the majority for sure, but could have one or two members coming from other ecosystems. It's my understanding. We will ask it. Okay. okay. Uh, if you are focusing on, but it, it could be the other way around. It could be, it could be. So I'm not, I'm not sure about that. Okay, thank you. So, but we are, but we are, we're sure that uh, even if we are in a specific strength, we need to be digital and green. For sure, that is totally sure. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I just, yeah, Mrs. Christina, I just gonna add because in some cases, uh, for sure, I know that uh, many clusters have in their ecosystem digital innovation hubs like we do. So I think this is the case that if uh, we are building some kind of, for example, agri food ecosystem, uh, then if you have sectorial digital innovation hub, that, that should work uh, bringing the digital, if not talking about cross sectorial. This is my opinion. Or maybe even because um, uh, each member state, they already have the candidates for the edicts to become edicts. So it, it could be even more interesting, for example, if you have edict, which is uh, concentrating on the agri-food sector, like also we do in Lithuania. So that's interesting also would be, I think, uh, a bit beneficial to bring those into the, um, into the call. Yeah. Thank you. That, that is a clear possibility, okay? I also think that it makes sense to bring digital clusters or green clusters on, on the on the consortia, okay? Uh, but th th there is just one possibility. There are more, for sure, and you are right. Okay, more. I think Nicola uh, question is uh, interesting. I don't know Nicola if you can. Hello hello everyone. Um yeah my question it's about the 75% and all action uh, toward the SMEs. Uh, we understand that voucher or a grantee it's possible but how, what about the time that we spend for coaching them or mentoring task does it um could, could it be considered as the 75% uh, that's time and support and services that we bring directly to SMEs? Nina. I am not sure. Um... My understanding if you cannot, uh, you cannot ask uh for money for the services that you are providing mm -hmm. from the consortia okay so if the mentoring or the coaching is made by consortia members you cannot you, you cannot ask them for paying with the money that you are providing on that 75 percent is my understanding but again we could ask Okay, we could ask, but uh, yeah, I think I have the same reading as you, but I think it's very complicated then. Uh, may I ask maybe a, a question related to this? Um, how do you see the subcontracting uh, part? Do the subcontractors need to be or can be identified and mentioned in the proposal uh, because of you know specific characteristic or competencies or needs to provide the services, or uh, do they need to be? Uh, the, is there a need to be a um, an open uh, an open procedure for selecting them after? After that, how how do you see this part? I I 
I don't, I think that it will make sense to nominate those that uh, perhaps will add value by experience or, yeah, mainly by yeah, experience. Competencies and references and everything. References and so on, and, and your companies are very good case, okay, Lucia? Yeah. Um, uh, I, I, I Another thing is that perhaps at the end you, you need to open, depending on the can, quantity and so on, you need to follow the rules, okay? But in my opinion... But it makes, uh, because I think, uh, I was thinking of Nicola's uh, question where he's um, coaching and mentoring. I mean, uh, I also share the same opinion like you, Antonio and Nina, that uh, they cannot be... Uh, uh, if they are done by the clusters, then it comes into the 25% budget of the clusters. If this coaching and mentoring is done by external uh, organizations to the cluster, then they can be considered into the 75%. So for example, by subcontractors. So if you are choosing a, a mentor or I don't know, a, a corporate mentoring an SME or whatever type of coaching and mentoring system, um, then this goes into the 25, but it's not provided by the cluster organization. And it has to be, um, uh, and I think the subcontracting is limited to 30%, uh, which in relation is quite high. I mean, the subcontracting goes more than the uh, in the budget than the cluster organizations. It makes sense, Lucia. It makes sense, and uh, so we need to. Uh, it's something that we could ask, just to be sure. Yeah, okay? just to be sure. I think that would be great. To but it will be uh, also. Um, it, it 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 is good to clarify it, okay? Because it opens very interesting possibilities, as you say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, Lucia. I just put in the screen here the support to third parties SME so that the 75% and it says here the support to third parties so to the SMEs cannot be provided through services offered by the consortium directly. So any services the consortium the clusters would like to give to the SMEs would not um, is not eligible for, for the direct support. Okay, I see that uh, Marta is saying with us that uh, Marta Krakowiak, that the info day will be on the 20th of this month. So it's a date, uh, save the date, okay, for sure. And, um, but anyway, we will ask the question that we are uh, taking here with you as soon as possible. It's similar to, uh, to the InnoSoup, Okay, with a lower budget, but the idea is different. Okay, the, here the, the point is to create, okay, it's not totally different, but it's to create the networks, the Euro cluster that should have a life after the, the, the end of the project. That is very important to understand. As far as I understand, the aim is not to create something that should or would disappear after the project, it's to create the network at European level that uh, will really empower collaboration through those uh, ecosystem or through those thematic focus, in, including the open stand. That is what I understand. So. Sorry, 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 Antonio, it's Marta speaking. Uh, I understand your point, but when you really read the call and you read the previous calls, it's exactly copy and paste. And also the other um, partnerships, strategic partnerships like Forai, like Excellence, they always also should remain after the project. So this is very um, strange call. It's like they will they are forcing to do something uh, additional but without any uh, bigger idea how to do it so they just took sorry for being very honest but i'm i like all most of people here have got 
quite wide experience in, 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 in the Cosmo calls and the Horizon calls. They're looking here like creating something new, but without mm -hmm. the, having the idea. And, and so they just took the, the best, let's say, the, the, the parts of the other calls and put it one together. And it could work, but you cannot give to clusters uh, so uh, low budget because uh, if you divide uh, 1 million 400 and just uh, say that in the worst case the 75 percent must be subcontracted it means that you have uh, 350 thousand euro to divide among the uh, partners so if you will have five partners it's like you know 70 thousand euro ahead and you really cannot uh, expect big effort to cover all the mandatory actors with such a uh, with such a low budget. So I really do hope that uh, the the, um, the SMAP uh, will clarify if uh, some training or some activities that the clusters provide uh, to their companies can be covered by the 75% as the previous questions uh, raised because it's it's almost impossible. And uh, um, it's uh, it's it's this call is you know just uh, appeared there. Uh, it should be open on the 30th of September. We are on the 6th. It's still in the forthcoming status. You cannot even have a look at the project proposal template because it doesn't work. And uh, and when I make the queries to the IT support tool at the at in the first day when it started, they answered to me very fast that they cannot solve it because the issue is of the SMAP Cosme team. So I wrote to the SMAP Cosme team to the email that they put on the funding and tenders portal, and I'm waiting for their answer. Like another 10 queries about this call to clarify. So you know it's, and now they are saying that they are they will put the 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 info day on the 20th, after one month of the call that is open. You know I I don't. It's very interesting. We are very interesting. We are evaluating to go to go for this call, but you know there are so many questions, and it's so not clear what can be eligible, what we can offer. That it's very difficult here to make any planning, because we can start writing the proposal, and then we will discover on the 20th of October if they will not answer before that the, what we planned and how we divide the budget to survive this call is not eligible. So I'm. We were looking for this call because it was highlighted, it was announced, but not in this form. Not 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 created like this, or at least not with such a low budget. So sorry for this, but I'm trying to interact with the SMAP team with the emails and with the IT tool to to get some more information on all the issues that uh, that other clusters are raising, and also that you try to help us to understand. But they are not answering. So maybe if you can, if you have some more direct contacts, it will be very helpful to get some uh, to get some concrete uh, information because the information in the call document, in some way, is also contradictory what is written in the funding and tenders call description in some parts. So you know, do we have a lot of? questions we are very interested like most of the people here to go for it but we need to be sure that it will be worth of it i need to clarify that we don't have any special connection and we need to follow because we we uh, eka are potential participants also we are a cluster network and most probably we will present ourselves to uh, one of the proposed with one consortium and okay. so you are uh, Regarding this, Antonio, because you are the cluster network, you are sure that you are eligible. My question is because uh, they are speaking about the cluster organizations that can erogate the services directly to the SME members. You are not erogating the, the services directly to SME members because your members are other associ cluster associations. So are you sure that you're eligible? This is a cluster network. We are a cluster yes. network. Yes. We can ask. I ask also this because I'm in this very similar situation, <laughs> <laughs> being a cluster network. And I also would like to be sure that uh, I can 
uh, I can be a project partner and I can, uh, let's say, uh, use the 75% to irrigate vouchers or lump sums, whatever, to uh, member companies that are not directly my associates, but I associate it to my members. So this is another issue that we uh, sent to, to the program. Hopefully they will answer one day. Okay, we, we will ask, but it will not make sense to mention cluster networks if you don't include those cl cluster network or network of clusters. So, but uh, we will ask for sure. I think, I think uh, Marta, you can look at the only do uh, document that is available that's an NX5 uh, on the page. And I think at the very last, uh, you can have, um, uh, there is the, the a signature for the eligibility of cluster networks. Have a look in that. Yes, yes, I have. But uh, uh, as we have some issues with the InnoSoups in the past uh, uh, regarding this uh, being a network, uh, uh, we need to just to be sure and the, the, the best is to ask them directly so they can confirm or not. Okay. The problem is that, you know, they really don't, un don't answer. Okay. Just to finish what I was saying before, we don't have any different contact that, than you. We will go through the official channels. Uh, the only point is that we we will uh, uh, we will uh, represent a, a global number of clusters. Okay, but that is need to be clear. We are as any one of you a potential consortium member. Okay, so uh, Jorge is speaking. Who uh, is asking who was speaking? I understand it was um, Marta, no? Yes, it right? was me. All my Marta. fault. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, oh, I just you. wanted to know uh, uh, your name um, to 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 understand more uh, the situation. So you are Marta from uh, from IEC. European Lighting Cluster Alliance, ELCA. ELCA. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much, Marta. Again, my recommendation is that you activate your video when, when you speak because it's more human, it's easier, okay? Okay, more questions, more comments. So I see many, many of you are saying you're interested in, in participating. That's very good. Okay. Um, I don't know if there are more questions without answer in the chat. Sorry, Teodora, welcome. Good morning. Hi. Yes, good morning. I also uh, mentioned in the chat and on the previous day that we, uh, when I spoke with Nina that uh, I will be interested to take part. And uh, from uh, the things that I see from the questions, and uh, I mean, obviously, some have started, as Marta was pointing, some have started uh, making some comment. I mean, um, uh, appointing some questions, addressing some questions, and we have shared uh, some. Que I mean, some questions have been shared now, as well as this. Um, list of uh, everyone saying I'm interested, I'm interested. So maybe we can uh, prepare before the open day on the 20th to create like something like a shared doc uh, with, uh, I mean, most common questions that have been addressed from the various directions and we are already kind of having, plus having some uh, ideas on the possible um, consortiums. So when going on the 20th for the open day, really to have kind of a uh, few scenarios so after that to be quick on uh, the further progress because then we will have like a month to i don't remember i don't have on the top of my head the uh, the final date for submitting but we know from experience that uh, one month it's not kind of enough enough when it comes to finding the 30th of November, yes. So we'll have like uh, 30 days max. So basically, oh. I was uh, kind of suggest we to have like one more, like uh, internal open day, let's say, call it like this, to put the notes or questions and uh, possible consortiums and ideas. 
we could have another meeting next week on this point on on the searching oh. and we could mm -hmm. look for if we have answer from some of the question before and what we could do, do next uh, 13 is to give those that are interested some one minute if you want one gold minute to present the candidacies it could be it could be a, a, an idea not to mm -hmm. to to dedicate next wednesday morning some minutes to uh review the questions uh, and i don't know the answer if we have the, the answer and also to to provide time for those interested in presenting their their candidacies to to do it in in one minute or something like that okay yeah that's good very good idea thanks um i have another idea uh, is to ask or to at least um at this open day to ask for a prolongation of the call given the fact that the materials are not available to start working so if there are any impediments you know hindering uh the participants to prepare and to start you know from day one uh in reality it the call should be prolonged with a time where the documents for example are not available i think we should make the case and uh, get more time for that, I, I, it was very good to hear from Marta and from Nicole, or I, I, I don't know, from the people who said that uh, the forms are not working and they are not answering. So I think we can, uh, we can, uh, yeah, ask for that, make the case. Okay. Okay. We can think about it. Uh, so that's an agreement we will dedicate uh, sorry we have but just for your knowledge we have another special meeting on the 14th which which, which day is the uh, event on low carbon energy it would be on the 19th so not next week and um, so next week's session we can dedicate um, to this uh, presentation of candidacies for interested clusters i think that's a very good idea and to further clarify the questions and then the week after we will not have our session on wednesday morning as usual uh, so not on the 20th at 8 30 but instead on the 19th at 3 p.m. in the afternoon because we will speak about the low carbon action um, project and there we will have um, partners from Canada so because of the time difference we will switch the meeting into in the afternoon yeah Canada Mexico and Americas in general speaking yeah that will be a very interesting session that's true it's in the 90th okay so it's clear we are going to review and uh, ask the question that we have agreed or shared during this meeting. We will um, we will also um, uh, invite you to meet again next Wednesday uh, with the and uh, we will review the questions and and give you a uh, time to present your proposals. Okay. By the way, Cluster Idea in Spain is also willing to participate. And, you know, we are an ICT cluster. And, um, and anyway, if you want to reach for us uh, during these days, uh, looking for partners and so on, that is part of our mission too, to promote the, the creation of high level, high quality level uh, consortia. So don't hesitate to do it. Time to close. Thank you very much and good luck in your proposals. See you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, thank you very much, Antonio. Thank See you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you very much, Antonio.